Hello and welcome back to the Irish Tennis Updates podcast. My name is Adam, your host. This episode, I have been chatting to Celine Simonia. Celine is Ireland's top female tennis player. She's recently moved into the top 1,000 in the world after some strong performances on the ITF tour so far this year. We chat all about Celine's tennis journey so far, including moving to Barcelona, where she now lives and trains, her experiences with Billie Jean King Cup so far, and a lot more. I hope you enjoy this episode. And without further ado, here is Celine. All right. Well, Celine, thanks very much for, for joining the show. Uh, how are things with you? I'm good, thank you. Very good. How are you? All good. All good. Really good. Um, listen, first question before we get into, into the tennis is if you could have one superpower, what would you choose and why? Um, I would choose the superpower of knowing any language. Okay. Um, I think it's because I travel a lot and I'll be playing a match and you hear from the other end of a court a coach screaming at their player in Russian, German, Italian. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to know what they're saying. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, because of that, I would like to know every language. That's a very interesting one. What, what, what languages do you speak? I speak Spanish, uh, a little bit of French, English, and Shana, my mother's tongue. Okay, okay. Uh, that's pretty good already. You've got doing well with the language. <laughs> but uh, non-Irish people, I say I speak Gaelic, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. just to make it a nice number of five, you know. Five, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so listen, we'll, we'll kind of get into it a little bit. Um, so firstly, just um, well, what, what are you up to at the moment? I know you're, you're training, so just maybe tell me a little bit about your training setup and kind of in between tournaments and, and how it looks for you. So right now I'm in the process of changing rackets because okay. it's a, usually I do it in the preseason, but in the preseason, our main target was to improve fitness so that when I go back out in the season, um, I'd be able to compete at a higher level. So now I am in the middle of cha- trying to change rackets and that's a nice process. And I'm also having a mini preseason because the okay. summer tournaments are a lot larger and, and more important, obviously going into the summer, more people are competing, there's more tournaments. Yeah. So yeah. it is... Um, very important that I'm physically fit enough to go out for three, four weeks and be able to know that I can put my highest level out on tour. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm interested in in the racket. Well, what what racket did you have before and do you know what you're switching to? Well, right now I'm trying, I'm use the Babla Pure Drive and and I really love that racket a lot. Uh, But I've seen, I've seen that um, I haven't tried many other racket brands and I don't want to just limit myself to one racket. So okay. we've just decided that let me try four or five different rackets, see how they feel. And if not, I always have the pure drive. I'm very happy with that racket. Okay. So it's just a thing to try and make sure there's no other racket out there that I need. Okay. Any uh, luck so far with any other rackets you've tried? Well, I've tried the Wilson Blade, the Wilson... Oh, what's the blue one called? um ultra ultra yeah, yeah the ultra yeah. i've tried the head boom i've tried the arrow and i've tried the e-zone and v-core so the okay. onyx e-zone and v-core okay. so i've tried quite a quite a few rackets there yeah amazing well uh, hopefully you find you find the perfect one in a in the next few yes, days hopefully. yeah yeah <laughs> so how long until your your next tournament and uh stuff like i'm that? thinking of heading out next week um to maybe monastery 15 Ks. Okay. And um, I'm going to try and stick to the 15 K tour until I have improved my ranking a little bit to start going out to the 25s, 40s, okay. 60s, etc. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So just, just maybe to look back uh, the last, last few months, I know you've started to play more of the tournaments and, and had a lot more wins. And uh, so mm-hmm. how have the few, few months been for you playing, playing a lot of matches? I think it's been good. There's been a lot of ups and downs, but, I can only say positive things about them. I know at the start of the year, I went out to India. It was a different experience. Mm. Um, it was a bit difficult for me out there, I'm not going to lie. Uh, they played very well. And it was something new for me to try. But it gave me a lot of confidence because I could see that the things that I was working on were working. It was just a matter of yeah. time to develop them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I put a lot of confidence in my coaches and those things are now starting to work. I'm starting to see the jigsaw make an image. Yeah, and, yeah. and then obviously I did the weeks in Antalya 
and I think I got to the first quarters of the year. And there I just, I could feel that all the things that me and my coaches have been working were on were like, as I said, connecting the dots yeah, and it yeah, gave yeah. a lot of confidence, especially going into the Billie Jean, um, which was yeah. my next tournament. Yeah, yeah. And obviously going to the Billie Jean, it was uh, different mentally knowing that we were the underdogs, but it was also um, something that I felt like I, I wasn't as scared to go into it knowing that with my coaches, what we'd spoke about, what we've worked on, it wasn't as scary going into it. And yeah, that was really like, it was a real, that Billy Jean really like instilled, I don't know how to say it. Like it made me feel more confident than ever that I can actually maybe go far or further than people expected or I expected myself to go. I could take steps into yeah. the professional career. It gave me, I know it was tough losing, but those losses against such top players made me, I don't know how to describe it, like feel like, yeah, I'm on the right path. Yeah. And I think also that's maybe why I did better when, okay, the first week I went to Antalya, okay, that we don't have to talk about. But <laughs> in the second week and the third week, um, it felt like it. I had a different type of confidence and it was because of those those weeks and the things that my coaches have been putting into my basket of uh, skills, I'd say. And yeah, so yeah. that's how it's been going, I guess. No, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to talk more about maybe uh, the Billie, well, definitely the Billie Jean King Cup, but maybe just to take a step back a little bit. Um, how did how did kind of you get into tennis at first, and and what was your kind of it was in the family or how did that all start for you? Well, my parents always believed that as kids, we should try many different things. So I started tennis when people would say considerably late. And okay. I started around the age of nine-ish. Okay. And we used to go to Herbert Park a lot. And I don't know if you know, they have tennis courts at the back. Mm. Uh, and I was like to my mom, she used to love watching Serena. Like there's videos of her watching the Wimbledon finals. And we're just sitting in the back, just watching, but we never played. And then I said to my mom, ah, I think maybe I'd like to play tennis. She was like, okay. So she was like, let's go to Parks Tennis. And from there, really, I started to develop the interest and started to like playing tennis a lot more. Yeah. 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 How quickly did that then get to a stage of you being you know, really competitive and starting to travel a bit for tournaments and all that? How quickly did all that so, get serious for you? I think started to get... Well, at the start, I didn't know that it was like, <laughs> you have to do all the steps, like you need to play juniors, then you need to play ITF. Then yeah, I just thought yeah. like, you become the number one in Ireland. Then next thing you just like, I don't know, teleport it. Like that's just my nine-year-old brain thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just teleport to pros and next thing you're on TV. So yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, when I think it was when I was around 10, nine and a half, 10, and one of the coaches in the parks tennis told me that, I think it was Anita, she works in Donnybrook. She yeah. told me that uh, I should probably join a club because I have a great level and we can work out from there how serious I want to take tennis. So Owen Casey was a big person to make me take tennis seriously. Um, yeah. I moved there with him and he said, okay, yeah, you're ready to compete. And yeah, I say around the age of 10, I started competing seriously. Okay, no good stuff. And I, I know then a couple of years after that, you you moved and, and you kind of were set up in, in Barcelona playing there. So tell me a little bit about that move and how hard that was to adjust and, and how those next couple of years were for you based based out of there. Yeah, um, well, I've always been told that I kind of have a boy Spanish type of game and yeah. coming from Ireland and where the tennis is a bit different to that. I was like, ah, that doesn't make sense. So when I moved to Spain, it was a really nice transition because I moved to an academy <laughs> called Bulgaria and they really instilled on the Spanish mythology. And they were teaching me, my coach, who's also my coach now, um, I left him for a period of time, but my coach Alberto Lopez, he, he helped me to grow my game into transition from a half Irish, half Spanish game into yeah, a... Yeah. Or Spanish suited game, playing heavier with spin. Yeah. And so I'd say the transition was pretty smooth. It was nice because I had a team around me that saw my potential, you could say, and decided to learn, teach me how to grow it, you know? 
yeah yeah so how important do you think that was like do you think you'd be be kind of where you are now if, if you'd stayed stayed based in Ireland I think it was important I mean I did do a two year uh two years in the UK okay. before I moved to, to Barcelona and in the UK it's very also team tennis based they have mm -hmm. a different system so I I was lucky enough that when I got there, I made a little a few waves that I was able to get into like national trainings and stuff. So that that transition from the UK to Barcelona was pretty important because I started to figure out who I am, my identity on the tennis court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and based in, in Barcelona, like what what was maybe one of the big, biggest differences that, that you'd noticed there from where you'd been before? And maybe in terms of maybe intensity of training or um i was about to the say they have no marks and spencer oh, okay. <laughs> like that that's, that's a big difference like i needed <laughs> my caesar salad wrap <laughs> like <laughs> i needed that but you have to, you have to get yeah. the basics down before you can start to think about the tennis <laughs> yeah so like yeah they didn't have the tescos or the the marks and spencer or the t yeah. it's not the same but yeah. in terms of tennis yeah the intensity is a lot different the drills are a lot more different they start i felt like here it was more about consistency mm -hmm. whereas in the uk and ireland i did more of hitting like the i people generally say i'm a powerful player so it was more about hitting fast but um in spain they've taught me or well, here they've taught me to be more consistent and the values of putting the ball into the court yeah and especially playing on clay because the the surface is more slow with that, you're able to adapt and able to clean up the technique and be more, like, the main thing is to be more consistent, really. Yeah, yeah, no, good stuff, good stuff. And just to maybe move on a little bit, um, when you start playing playing more of the ITF, so the under-18 uh, junior <laughs> events, I know you, you got up to, to top 100 in, in the in those rankings by the time you finished. So mm -hmm. how how did you find competing in those tournaments? Um, I guess that would have been pretty different to what you, you know, you, you, you were used to. Yeah, I think uh, playing juniors is a really great foundation because you start to learn how to travel every week. Playing as you go up, the players are kind of the same, but playing different players, I mean, it's going to be the same. If you go up in WTA, you meet the same yeah. players. So it's kind of the same thing. It's the same thing, yeah, just yeah. juniors and pros. One is earning money, one is not. That's really yeah. the difference. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it was a really important step in my career, especially confidence wise. Just just having that feeling of being in the top 100, I know like, okay, it was at the bottom of the top 100, but it's still an accomplishment for me. Absolutely. And, yeah, and it made me feel proud. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Irish and I'm top 100. You know, you don't see yeah. many people. It just made you feel prouder to be an Irish player in the top 100 because not many people are there. And it made it feel even more special. Yeah. If I don't know if you understand where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's a, a brilliant achievement. Top 100 there. And um, tell me, do you have a, a best best memory or best kind of achievement from your, that you'd look back on from those junior junior tournament days? I mean, obviously, the main achievement that would be great was that um, I got into the Grand Sams. I was meant to play Australia, but I got COVID, which okay. was unfortunate. Damn. Yeah. Um, and I would have been in main draw, but, you know, opportunities come uh, and go. It's yeah, how yeah. it's the way of life. Um, but yeah, playing in Wimbledon, it was just a different feeling being around players that, you know, all want the same goal. Yeah. It was like um, a great fe a feeling, a great atmosphere, obviously a bit more nervous, but it was probably one of my greatest junior achievements there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and well, what do you think maybe was the, the biggest thing that you learned, the biggest lesson you had from from those years? Uh, the biggest lesson I learned is probably that to trust the process, mm -hmm. because I'm the type of person that likes, if I want something, I want to get it like right now. Yeah. Um, but with the juniors, it's like you go out, you go to a country, you can go for four weeks and you just lose four straight weeks in a row. And then you play four weeks in a different country and you see and get in the finals, you're winning, you're semis. So yeah. it was just trust the process and never for one second doubt my game because as soon as you start doubting, things can mess up a little bit. So yeah, it was, yeah. that was my yeah. yeah no good stuff good stuff and maybe just to to as you then transition to start playing more futures events and, and, and so on to the pro side how how was that transition how easy how or what big challenges were there i think the transition was neither hard or easy i think it was more so the mental side is whether i was ready like most people say it's whether you're ready or not to play futures mm -hmm. 
because some people look at it and they'll be like oh my god it's futures and other people will look at it and be like it's just another stepping stone i need to get to the top yeah so i was kind of in the middle of it at the start especially i was like oh my god it's futures and no this is where i need to be to as a stepping stone it's a place that i want to be so i can make sure i get to the top so in that type of sense i was ready i'm like now i can say i'm kind of ready yeah yeah, (laughs) i was ready to start playing futures and i'd kind of mentally prepared myself to play futures especially playing juniors at at the high one the the highest level i uh, felt like i was yeah ready to play futures yeah yeah no a, a big i guess a big milestone for for anyone when they start playing futures is getting that the first ranking point on the board with you know your first main draw win do, do you remember that that day maybe your nerves and, and how you felt with your first win yeah it's actually because um i'd already won team main draw match so you need three points to get the ranking mm. uh show to show up and i was in cairo i had just qualified and i played I was going to play this girl that in juniors previously two years before I played her two weeks in a row and I had lost like seven, six, seven, six, seven, five, seven, five. Those were okay. the scores. Okay. okay. And so I already knew it was like an, some sort of emotional battle, but I was like, I remember coming off those, the court after playing her those times two years ago, I was like, I could have won. And I didn't want to come off that court that day and saying, oh, I could have won that much. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I was, like, I was like, I have to put everything. This is your moment, you know. Don't just do it for yourself. Like, especially when I try to motivate for myself, I try not to say don't do it just for yourself. Do it for your coaches, your family, your country, everyone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, just do that. And I think it was a pretty solid, I think I won 6-2, or 6-3, Yeah, that was it. I think I broke my voice celebrating. Okay. I said to <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I remember my voice broke <laughs> after I won that match. So yeah, it was a yeah, it was a nice moment. Yeah, for me no, then. I, no, definitely, definitely. And so then I know maybe from that time till now, maybe it took a while until you started to get really getting a you know like a lot of wins. Which now you're you're getting a lot more wins, ranking up to the top one thousand, which is which is amazing. So how how I know you've reached reached some semis and futures. So like how have you started to kind of build that success and kind of you know, get to a yeah a higher ranking? Obviously now, I think. The way that I've, I don't know how to say, built, uh, the way I've built uh, up to this moment, I would say it's mainly just people off court because on court, well, off court and off court, as in my coach, on court, I tend to be very, I like to be in my own space. And sometimes when I get in that space, I get comfortable. But my coaches and my parents, they've really pushed me to get out of that comfort bubble. So I don't think if they hadn't pushed me to get out of that comfort bubble, I would have been where I am now. And I wouldn't be where I should hopefully be going. So it was, it's mainly the people that I've like been surrounded by that have helped me get the results that I've been getting recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Are there any uh, changes you've had to your team or you know, people around you, or has that been constant over the last few years? Uh, so the changes I made were last year before Wimbledon. I had a coach when I first moved to Barcelona. Uh, his name was Alberto Lopez. I think I mentioned him before in the video. Mm-hmm. And we stopped working together. Uh, we were looking over what were the next type of people we wanted to work with. And Alberto's name popped up. I remembered I liked working with him and I improved a lot. So we started working with him and he works with a fitness coach who specializes in track and fields. He trained Olympic uh, Canadian track and field people. Okay. I don't know, athletes, not people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> athletes. And um, he then transitioned to playing, focusing on tennis players. Um, both have worked with Garbina Muguruza and Aslan Karatsev and okay. with and more players, but that would take a whole video to <laughs> say that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so I started working with them and they've just put a really positive vibe into my into my into my life. And I think without them, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> just yeah. a good team. Yeah. 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 I'm interested in in the the futures world of of how you see doubles, and the role mm-hmm. of doubles in in those tournaments. Because I know that you've 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 played quite a bit of doubles, and you've had I guess so far a bit more success in doubles, and I think you've you've won some some doubles titles. 
um, yeah. probably before you were having as much success in the singles. So uh, how do you see that, the role of doubles and maybe giving you confidence or do you think, is that something you're going to keep playing lots of doubles or uh, how does I that think fit in for you? For me, no matter what, I will always like to play doubles and singles. I don't think one is more important than the other. Um, it's competing. Yeah. <laughs> it's the feeling of winning. If it's If I'm winning in doubles, I'm happy. If I'm winning in singles, I'm happy. Both of them make me feel so good. So doubles... I will play it until, I don't know, until I can't. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, like, as you said, I got more titles in so far in doubles, but I, I guess it was because in juniors last year, I really did well in doubles. And I think I carried that confidence yeah. through, uh, through that. But yeah, I usually, I usually use doubles as a way to prove to myself that I should not be afraid of the people that I'm playing in singles because it's cross court and on the yeah. cross it's like whoever misses first or who's more powerful and I see that I'm able to keep up with them so I'm like oh, okay look I can yeah. do it there you so can why can't yeah. I do yeah. it on a singles court so yeah, yeah. I, I will always and forever play doubles in singles Brilliant. in my yeah. heart yeah yeah no great great stuff and uh so I guess you know looking back over the last little while what, what do you think is your your biggest achievement that you're most proud of so far I don't know. I'd say, I'd say, it was, if someone looked at my career, they'd say I've achieved many things. Well, many things. But um, I don't think I have one achievement that I'm very proud of because okay. every moment I step on court and I do something that I've been working on, I'm proud of that moment. So for now, I'm just proud that I'm still going out on court and fighting every day because yeah. it's difficult to go out every week you know win some lose some travel for hours go back yeah. and do the same process so I think just the achievement of just going onto court and making sure I perform every day that yeah. for me is a, a just a big achievement for me in my books anyway no good stuff good stuff and just then in terms of in terms of looking to the future what kind of do you, do you have specific goals that you've set yourself uh, kind of with your team or is it more kind of just take it as it comes or like oh, how, how are you looking ahead to the next few months well the next few months i'm going to be trying playing some 15 Ks, hopefully getting a few titles under my belt yeah uh, to get those just to my coach says them in their in stages uh 15s you complete that stage 25s yeah complete that stage 40s um, mm -hmm. and i think it's a good it's a good way to look at it instead of jumping and trying to just grab points wherever you can okay and um, so for me uh, i think that is the main goal to try and transition out of the 15k uh, stage as fast as possible yeah and in terms of ranking obviously i'd want to be 300 by the end of the year but you have to take into consideration some tournaments are going to go well Maybe if I transition to the 25s, I won't do as well at the start. Or maybe I'd do yeah. perfectly perfect and yeah. I have a good 10 tournaments. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I skip the 40s and I go to the 60s. Yeah. So <laughs> my dream obviously is to be 300. But my coaches and I are starting to say, okay, for now, let's try and get to 600. If we can get to 600, then we talk again. So it's just like steps, I guess. Yeah. Just getting one ranking one ranking up more each time is yeah. where I'm my goals are right now yeah yeah to kind of break it down into smaller pieces yeah. piece by piece yeah. yeah yeah and to not like obviously looking at the ranking is nice but my coach says or oh, he always says that if we can train to improve the level instead of to improve the ranking the yeah. ranking will come so that is my my main my main goal to train to improve the level so that the ranking will just come with it you know yeah. and eventually yeah like that, that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and just to move on maybe somewhere else is i know you mentioned it earlier a few minutes ago just on the, on the billy jean king cup and um, mm -hmm. so you know your, your chance to to represent ireland which you've had a a few times now i know um how, how much of a, a goal was that for you as, as you grew up kind of something to look ahead to um, for. I mean, for me, whenever I saw someone representing Ireland, whether it be swimming, running, skiing, I don't know, yeah. singing, yeah. I got yeah. so jealous. I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> like, that was like, so for me, that was like a really big thing. Even my dad, 
and he talked about, oh, like for me, my biggest dream would be for you to represent your country. And I remember the first time, I think we applied to do the, the Billie Jean. And the first time when I got the email saying, oh, you've made the team. I, I don't know, like that feeling was like, oh, I'm bad. Like yeah, I'm representing yeah. my country. And now I was like, yeah, now people are going to be like, look, she's representing the country. That made yeah. me feel really, really, that, that was a good feeling. Yeah. I think it's just representing your country. I know that every time you go out playing ITF, the flag is next to your name. When they yeah. say from Ireland, that like Celine, someone you from Ireland's on the left side of the chair, that makes you feel good. Just them saying it. So to be able to represent your country in a team environment that I'm not really used to was very, very, very good. Yeah. 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 And how I know is it, is it three times that you've, you've played. Billie yeah. Jean this year was now? my third. Year. Yeah. 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 So tell me a little bit about, I guess, how that's moved on and maybe it's not so much about the excitement of just playing and maybe you've started to, to aim higher or whatever it is, but how, how have the actual experiences playing for Ireland been? So the first year I went, I was very ambitious. I wanted yeah. to, I was like, let's, let's get promoted right now. That's yeah. what I was like. Yeah. I was like, yeah, let's get promoted. And I think I brought that energy also because I was the youngest on the team. I had like that. Yeah. Let's get promoted. Yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that type of energy. And then not last year, I was, it wasn't my first time. So I felt a bit more comfortable on the team. I knew who the girls were. Like it was mm-hmm. more, comfortable. I knew John because John had been in contact constant contact with me through the year helping uh, helping me and asking about my development yeah. so um I was a lot more comfortable and a lot less crazy you could say <laughs> and that year I really wanted to get for it especially we were on clay because we're on clay okay. and yeah. it's a surface that in Spain is very popular so I was like yeah. okay yeah, yeah we can we can do this we can fight for it and we did really well actually we just had some tough matches I also feel like if you probably ask the girls there that whenever I was in those uh, stages, it's like you're playing because you're playing for your country. There's like a different weight on your shoulders. And in those matches that were important, I felt like, yeah, like this is where you need to show up. But then I played someone 300 and I was like, okay. (laughs) I tried my best, but like you, you feel a bit disappointed in that sense. And then this year, obviously the shock of being promoted to group two. Yeah. That was also a different experience because you saw some big names like Zachary, Contevet, mm-hmm. and yeah, players yeah. that were inside 300 WTA. It was a different, I felt less pressure than I did when I played the first two years because I was like, okay, that is we're the underdogs in this so we don't need we don't have any pressure we just go out there swing our rackets and whatever comes comes what doesn't come doesn't come but yeah i was fighting more to stay in the group this year and yeah. then try and get promoted the year after because we have the confidence of being in the group and yeah it didn't work out but i think next time next time yeah yeah i'm we'll uh, ready <laughs> yeah and, and tell me just from your point of view then those matches i guess it's a chance to play as you said, uh, you know, like higher ranked players than probably you would do on you know on the week to week basis. How much do you think you were able to to take from those those tra- those matches? I think I learned about myself a lot in these matches. I learned how hard I can push myself because people in the top three hundred they don't make as many they don't make mistakes. They every single ball they hit is with intention and they meant for it to go to that corner. Yeah, and they have the high serve percentage. They're used to playing. They know how to intimidate people. And I learned that I was not afraid. Maybe a year or two ago, I would have been like, oh. But I learned that I was not afraid. And I was like, okay, if this is what we're going to do now, we better do it now. You know, like, this is not the time to be intimidated. I learned that about myself, that I was able to stand up and fight and box my way. Yeah. through some points yeah. sometimes more difficult than others um, but yeah I think that's I, I learned a lot about myself in that in that yeah in that. yeah and then just to bring it back then to the obviously it's a team environment which is 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 not the the, the normal for for playing on tour how, how did you find the uh playing in a team and like each I guess you have it once a year now how how, how do you enjoy the the team team tennis I think it's nice because obviously the girls that are there they're very supportive <clears throat> 
and they've been through the college system so they're teaching me how to be more of a like a well especially the last two years had to be more of a team player mm -hmm. but now we have our chance <laughs> and we get to scream together cry together laugh together so that was a nice thing um, and also just having coaches like Paul at Paul Casey and yeah. John there they also made us like connected us like a family uh, yeah. it was more it was more of a family setting than a team I could say when one person was feeling down we were able to pick each other up and also having Lisa and Ifa Ifa was our physio yeah there they were able, like just having those people around us made the team environment less team and more family which mm -hmm. I think helped me settle Amazing. yeah also in a different way yeah oh, brilliant brilliant so, so just just the next question there, Celine. Um, I'd I'd love to hear a bit of of maybe the advice you'd have for for younger juniors. Um, I, a lot of people that I've I've spoken to have have gone through the college route, and and you mentioned that with some of those those teammates you've had in Billie Jean King Cup. Um, so I'd love to hear your kind of perspective as someone you know who who, who didn't do that route. Um, how, what kind of advice might you give to to you know to, to younger players who are who are open to to take their tennis a bit further? The first thing I'd say is, I'd say trust your gut. Because it's very easily to do it's very easy to do what your peers are doing. And um, I know at some point, probably when I was 15, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to college. But my gut was telling me it's not the right, the right decision to do to make. So just trusting your gut. If you feel and you believe that you can make it, then go for it. Because belief is almost half of it you don't need to have any special talent you don't need to have anything special just believing that you can do it can go a long way so yeah. it'd be to trust your gut and obviously to enjoy and um, i'd hope that if, we, if you choose to stay and work obviously sometimes the working i'm going to be honest sometimes you go there and you go to training and you're like oh and i'm going to have to run for hours and yeah. lift weight and you know do all this stuff but at the end of the day i enjoy it so it's to trust your gut and enjoy yeah and, yeah and also I'm trust thinking. the person yeah yeah those are the um, main yeah. things i would so, yeah. say uh, how, how do you think do you manage to keep that that enjoyment you mentioned it can obviously at times get a little bit more of a slog but uh, is there a, something you do that helps you really keep keep kind of the perspective and, and keep, keep enjoying the the journey yeah i mean I, I, I don't know what it is, really. When I did other sports, I just knew that, like, oh, I can't do this for a long time. But there's something, with like, inside me that I love so much about tennis that I can't just let it go. When I hear an umpire say game, set, match, no matter who it is, it could be orange ball, it could be 90-year-olds. Anyone yeah. just says game, set, match, I get shivers because I love that, just that feeling. And I think just playing for that feeling is just pure enjoyment. And then obviously on top of that, it's the competing. Even if I lose 6-0, 6-0 tomorrow, it's, I'd be happy because I enjoyed the match. Okay, I didn't do that. <laughs> but like, I enjoyed just competing and trying to fight to get one game or two points. Like for me, it's like, I think that's how I keep myself enjoying it. Like, yeah. um, just just searching for that feeling of goosebumps and i think yeah. that's how i i don't know how to describe it <laughs> that's, no, 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 that's really good that's really good um so just a, a few questions to finish up with selena a bit of a little bit of a kind of some quick fire questions so I'll, I'll i'll throw a few questions at you and you can just give give your first first answer that comes to your mind okay um so first one is who's your favorite player serena williams well that's x and carlos Alcaraz. Okay. Uh, favorite Grand Slam? Wimbledon. Uh, favorite surface? Grass. Okay. Um, forehand or backhand? Forehand. Uh, serve or return? Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> fine. Fine. Um, uh, ground stroke or volley? Uh, volley. Okay. Uh, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic. Um, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You're, you're, given, you're given no comment. Yeah, no comment. Fair enough. Um, Serena Venus. I know you've said Serena. Yes, Serena yeah, and yeah. Venus. Both of them are strong, strong tennis players. Uh, strong history. So both of them. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. And uh, just finally, what is your favorite thing about tennis? 
my favorite thing about tennis is I don't know, I see the battles. You know, I just yeah. like a good battle. Even though it's like sucks when you're like, like 40 love down or you start cramping and it's five five. <laughs> you yeah, can't yeah. understand. But it's just that feeling of a battle like that, like fight or flight. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea of that this person in front of you could be the best tennis player in the world. But when you step on court, it's zero zero. You know, you yeah. don't have anything. It's that battle knowing that. No matter what, you have to put everything. Yeah, I like the battles. I like yeah, that. Brilliant. I think that, that 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 kind of answer is it would be similar to what a lot of people would say about you know just the, the competing, the the you know just there's, there's nothing like being being in a tennis match and being on court. So that, that's definitely yeah. that's a good answer. Thank good you. stuff. Um, well, listen, Celine. Um, I think that that's about it there. But I um, just want to say a big thanks for for coming on and having the chat. I've I've re- really enjoyed talking to you, getting to 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 know your story a little bit more. Um, just, just absolutely wish wish you all the best over the next over the summer for your tournaments and and uh, the rest of the year. But um, yeah, just a big thanks for for talking. <laughs> Thank you for having me and for the constant support. I see your messages on Twitter, and it actually <laughs> gives me a lot of pride and energy and motivation so thank you well listen glad to hear that i'll i'll, uh, I'll keep doing this and uh you you can keep doing your thing as well but um <laughs> listen uh, appreciate, appreciate the time again so just thanks very much big thanks once again to celine for her time with this episode i know she has a lot going on at the moment training for, for the summer tournament so really appreciate the time thank you also for listening to this episode hope you enjoyed it please do consider sharing the episode if you thought it was interesting with anyone else who might enjoy us Hope you enjoy some tennis over the next few weeks with the good weather. And until next time, I've been Adam and goodbye.